Hi, good afternoon, guys. How are we doing today? Good, and you? Fine, thank you. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. So we made it. We did. We did these ten weeks, and 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 we did it. So, how are you feeling? Worried. <laughs> Why? Well, I, I feel good at all. Last the first class, I I I, I was a breeze. I feel I feel good at all. Okay, so what do you need to feel better? Question one. That's the hardest one. Okay, but but we have two two very capable ladies who have question one, and we just take good notes and 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 try your best. Remember, we don't want you to get information overloaded, but. If you made it this far, Anita, you're gonna make it. That's that's all you have to tell yourself. Well, I got it. my notepad, my pen, my pencil. I got everything. Notes, right. sticky notes. I'm ready to take all the notes tonight. And remember, the key is organization. You know, of course, you need the notes on the mandatory question, and then, um, you, you know, you should decide. I'm gonna answer the question on tax. I'm gonna answer the question on sanctions. Okay, and then you should be fine. But don't don't. Don't worry about it. If you made it through the 10 weeks, you're going to make it. Okay. So try to put away the nerves and have you schedule some time to just unwind and feel good and, and study. Yes. I have Wednesday and Thursday off to prepare. Okay. Okay. Good. Because that's the key. Once you're not worked up and overwhelmed, normally, you know, you have clear thoughts and, and um, clear understanding. Um, the key is just to read the question and, and make sure you answer the question, okay? And, and each question is gonna have three parts, um, two or three parts. Make sure you answer the entire question and, and, and try not to get confused about what the question is asking. So read over the questions two or three times to make sure you understand. Is this question about confidentiality or SDRs? Is this about um, failing to disclose or, or something else. So just, just make sure you answer all the parts of the questions and you should be okay. All right. Um, so most of you would have been to the Institute already. And of course, you know, um, it's a closed book exam. I have to say this, you cannot take in the review sheet. Um, you know, a lot of people say, well, what's the purpose of the review? If I couldn't take in the sheet, it's, it's a closed book. Please only take your keys and a pen. The exam is going to be recorded. Um, Ms. Dean will be expecting you all next week, Thursday from six to nine. Should you have an emergency, please call and um, arrange with Ms. Dean and just let her know. Um, if you need to reschedule, please call and arrange with Ms. Dean. Please don't call on Thursday. Please call her by um, Tuesday the latest because we will have to arrange another exam for you. Okay, so um, just your pens and your keys, no bags, no books, no review sheet from six to nine next week, Thursday. Okay, is that clear? Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Collette, can I ask you a quick question before we get into the homework? Yes, go ahead. Um, The W-8 ban and the W-8 ban E, are these forms for non-US citizens that collect income from US companies? It's not citizens, the W-8. One is, is for individual and one is for- Right, and the E is for entity. entities. Correct. Right. But at least for American citizens? No, they for non-American citizens. Okay, but they collect- Call foreign funds. jurisdictions. Okay, but they collect funds, but we still have to pay tax. The America still takes taxes out of it or something. Well, it, it, it depends. If you have something called U.S. and visa, which is like could be a U.S. address or a U.S. driver's license, mm -hmm. um, and you are, you know, um, you have to pay taxes to America, so they classify you, um, you wouldn't be filling out a W-8 or W Ben E. You would be filling out a W-9 if okay. you are classified as a U.S. citizen. Okay. You see, and so normally um, persons trade in the market, right? Right. And there's a withholding tax of 30 or 40% that has to be paid. And so even if you're non-American, 
that W eight right. That's that's what you that that withholding tax has to be paid. Got it. Right. Okay. Once you're trading in the U.S. market. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Good. A any other questions? And like I said, all of the homework questions came from fa past final exams as well as classwork questions. So don't be surprised if you see some of them on the um, final exam and, and that's how the, you know, the questions are structured. So just make sure, like I said, read the question properly. Um, look at the time, um, gauge yourself. Um, you can have about 30 minutes per question. You do not have to answer question one first, whichever is the easiest question, answer that first. The only problem what I see persons don't do is they forget to number their questions. Please, if you don't answer it, even if you answer it in order, numerical order, you still have to number the questions. So please, please, each page, put your name on it and each page, let it be visible that this is question number four, number five, or what have you. Can you also let us know, because this seems to be a very big problem. Can you say whether or not you answered the multiple choice questions? Because like I said, if you find the multiple choice questions to be hard, leave them, go to the essays, and, and then come back to the multiple choice questions. A lot of times, persons do not come back to the multiple choice questions. So I'm asking you, when you write your name and any other information on the front page, please indicate, put multiple choice questions and put yes, okay? And then write in the questions that you, you answered. I answered number one, eight, seven, and six. And that will help with all of this. You know, some persons don't answer, five questions some persons only answer three okay but please indicate the questions that you answered on the front page and indicate whether or not you answered the multiple choice questions and, and that will help okay any questions is that clear okay 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 good okay very good um okay so we'll start with Question one, I think it's Cassie and Lenny, um, who would have completed question one for us. Of course, we know question one is going to be um, the mandatory question. So um, you need, that's 20 points. And so you need a little bit more than just the 10 valid points. Um, you want a proper overview of the three cases at the back. I realized that in, when we went back over the homework, a lot of persons did not do an overview of the three um, questions at the back, okay? So if you wanna get full points, there has to be an overview of the three questions at the back. And then more than likely it's gonna be, does this problem happen in the Bahamas? Yes, okay? It doesn't matter how many persons have been charged, we know that this has been prevalent for a very long time. And only after 2018, we saw our politicians being um, brought before the court. Of course, we know in our public sector and the government sector, most government employees believe they need a tip to do their job, okay? I run into some people down now for, uh, I'll just use this as an example, a business license that was supposed to be ready in, in seven days. We on a 20th day and they said, you know, come in and see me and I can see what I can work out for you. No, I don't need to come in and see. You. Okay, so we know all sorts of corruption happens and there are many cases online that you can also use as an example. Okay, so we will start with uh, Lanique and Cassie. And, and see what they have for us. Go ahead, ladies. Good night. Good night. Carrie, you there? I'm here. I'm on the road. Let me pull over. <laughs> on, you want me to just read your part then? Yeah, I'm on the road driving. I'm sorry. I was trying to get in. That's okay. Go I'll ahead. read it for you. Okay. Go ahead. Thanks. So, 
the question is Agmon Group Typologies, Corruption and Bribery, Bahamas Requires Research and Local Example. So bribery refers to the offering, giving, soliciting, or receiving of any item of value as a means of influencing the actions of an individual holding a public or legal duty. Corruption, as noted by the Egmont Group of Financial Intelligence Unit, is generally considered to be the abuse of power for private gain. It can occur at all levels and is usually um, facilitated by the provision of services or the payment of a bribe. The overview of the three cases highlighted in the Egmont financial analysis cases, 2011-2013, um, that focus on corruption and bribery. Case number one, the PEP was being investigated for being involved in local bri bribery corruption and conducting money laundering. Illegal proceeds were being deposited to his personal account where he would take his commission and then transfer it to a terrorist organization. Case number two, a PEP used a host of shell companies in different countries to conceal the true origin of where the proceeds came from. Money was cleaned through large purchases and majority cash payments. Case number three, civil servant uh, financial profile did not match up with his wealth and assets displayed to the public. Um, he stole tax payments that should have been given to the state's treasury. He had several people under his influence through the use of bribery, such as law enforcement agencies, prosecutors, and, and judges. Um, so the indicators of corruption and bribery can usually be seen in the following areas: abnormal large cash, abnormal large cash of money used to purchase property or invest in shell companies, the establishment of companies in offshore jurisdictions and tax haven countries, the utilization of law firms with known history of money laundering, and then politically, it's usually done by politically exposed person, persons, but not only done by those persons. Um, the Journal of Financial Crime, Volume 4, provides a review of case law on corruption and bribery of public officials in the Bahamas with a focus on the Prevention of Bribery Act um, that records the single primary case under the Act states that the reason that there have been relatively few prosecutions under the Act relates to the difficulties of proof. Evidence is difficult to obtain because the situation typically involves only the giver and the receiver of the bribe, both of whom have a vested interest in concealing the transaction. So we have a lo some local cases. Case number one, in the case of Wilbert Moss, in which the intended receiver did give evidence against the bribe and giver, or his intermediary, the accused highlighted a number of technical arguments in his defense that question if an agent could be charged and if the magistrate held a public office. In this instance, the rules were broadened to include all inclusive of judicial officers, magistrate, judges, and not just public officials. Case number two, in May 2016, Freddie Samuel Ramsey faced a $10,000 fine and four years in prison after the jury convicted him of multiple bribery related charges stemming from the Alstom SA Bahamas Electricity Corporation scandal. These offense on conviction of information fines not exceeding $10,000 or imprisonment not exceeding four years or both. And on summary convictions, the fines are reduced to $5,000 or two years or both. Another case is Shane Gibson, <clears throat> excuse me, was accused of receiving more than $250,000 from contractor Jonathan Ash to speed up around a million dollars in payments owed by the government. Mr. Gibson was found not guilty um, and corruption was displayed when he was accused of using his power from the position he held for financial gain. Another case, Frank Smith, charged with abusing his position as chairman of public hospital authority by demanding and receiving bribes, allegedly demanding and receiving bribes totaling $60,000. Mr. Smith was acquitted of the charges as well. And another case, last case was Alma Campbell and her son, who was accused of, a steal, of stealing 1.2 million from the Ministry of Tourism back in 2019 
several bank transfers and large purchases were made. The minister mishand mishandled the integrity of the office by way of theft through obtaining funds from a fraudulent check. Any questions? Yeah, I don't know. Very good, Lanique. And Cassie, I don't know if El Elma Campbell was charged with corruption and bribery, though. Was she charged with that? No, she was in charge, but right, I right. was just showing where she used the office to, um, she mishandled the integrity of her position to get a, well, I guess. Well, yeah, yeah. So she should yeah. have been charged with corruption, but I don't think she was. And in fact, they had confiscated a lot of her goods. And just, yeah, she just get it back. She get the yeah. car back. Yeah, this is good, good. You're current. All right, good. She got a BMW yeah, she back. she got a car back. So I don't know how possible if it's unexplained wealth and you are charged with fraud, how are the items being returned to you? And the court case has not even started yet. So that, that's kind of suspect. Yeah. Last time I yeah. checked. Go, go ahead. Sorry, that was who, Araldo? Araldo, I think was gonna say something. No. Okay. Araldo, yeah, Mike is muted. Uh huh. All right. Last time I checked, I still see a vehicle. Still sitting up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's well, sitting up, but it, it was announced that she, you know, she, she had fought for it. She had well, fought for it a few times, and her um the warrant I get or the seizure to, uh, order had expired during the pandemic, and and so um they were trying to extend it, so her lawyer tried to get it back then. In fact, they see some cash. And she has been drawing down on the cash, I, I am told. Oh, wow. So yeah, by that, Mr. Court's case, come, the cash might have the cash left. Yeah, that money gone. Yeah, so I, I really don't know what's what's happening in, in the court system. And, and, and this is why people aren't taking it seriously. Because if you cannot prove how you acquired this money, how are you talking about, Eddie? You got to pay your life bill and you need some money and you need $100,000 and they releasing it to you. So that's, that's what crazy. happens when you when you win a number, but you didn't win it from one of the regulated game analysis, so you don't have an invoice. So where you win it from? Where you win where it you from? Win it from there there is a whole gaming operation that's not regulated by the gaming board of the Bahamas. Well, you gotta put that under your mattress, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you nobody, you nobody's supposed nobody to nobody supposed to take that. that if you aren't declaring the source of funds. And even if you're declaring the source of funds, I think Scotia, anybody from Scotia, Scotia still is say. We ain't taking island luck in flowers money. Mm -hmm. Right. So even if it legitimates a Renita, yeah, under your mattress. <laughs> Safest place. <laughs> right. Okay, guys. So any any questions for Lanique? Um was very thorough. Uh, gave a lot of points. You just need to elaborate on those points. Mm -hmm. Um, any any questions for Lanique? Come on, this the, the mandatory questions. Um, let, let us know. I'll be clear. Lenique, you could send that to us, please. Before I send it, Carrie and I had a question, Ms. Bullet. Okay. So if I send this <clears throat> and all of us have the same cases, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah that, that it, I mean, it's, it's not a problem, but it, it can't it be a problem us, how much cases we have. No, but yeah, I, just, I just got a no, check. I just no, got a check. What happens is, Carrie was wondering about that. No, it, that's what happens. It, it, everybody just copies and pastes. And remember now, we are testing comprehension and understanding, not copy and paste. So when we see 50 answers with the, it's the same exact wording, then we start to take our points because you just copy and paste and you don't understand. Okay. But, yeah. but it wouldn't be the same word in Ms. Bullet, but it'll just be the same case. Trust, trust Everybody me, if Lanique sends that, that could be it. Y'all go read that. Nobody's gonna do research. Y'all gonna um, have to do research because yeah. it's just we only just scale over the case, like yeah, and just yeah. But Miss Bullet, Bullet that as an answer. Miss Bullet, Bullet, she look at the the example she and Gibson. Every I, I show everybody in intro you she and Gibson when they was writing their essays. No, I some of these cases Shane just to come back. I, I didn't know that. Sorry. Yeah, it's Shane Gibson, Frank Smith. Um. Kendrick Dorset. See, I didn't use now. that one. It's, sorry? 
No, I didn't. You have Kendrick Dawson there. Yeah. yeah, Kendrick Dawson um, and Adrian Gibson now. So there are a lot of cases. Okay. Yeah, so it was up to y'all, but y'all please don't don't just pace it to the and 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 you know to the exam. Or if you answer a previous question, it'll be changed a little bit. So please, you know. So if we did um question one for our homework, we could use our same verbiage from that, yes. right? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's what I would encourage. If you whatever question you did for homework, please have that as one of the questions that you answer in the exam. That just makes it easier. You would have already done the research. Okay? Okay, I can send it to you. I okay. just was asking. Yeah, you all put it in your own words. Though. Okay, so any any <laughs> other well, questions? Wait, you really thought we was going to copy and paste everything they said? That's what happens, Priya. Priya, I've been doing this for the last seven years, and this, that's what happens. There will be one or two persons that have something different. Everybody else will have the same thing. That's what happens. Are we still handwriting these exams? Yes, it's handwritten. Ms. Bullard, a quick question, please, Carrie. Um, is there a, 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 a quantity of, of cases that you would want to be uh, placed in these essays? Or no, it doesn't have two no, minimum? To yeah, minimum two and no more than three. Okay. okay. Now there are even, even for the twenty point one, like yeah, even for the twenty point one, yeah. But okay. like, if the question specifically, like, I don't know if you all remember question one from the intro exam, it asks you for five types of crimes. So, right, then you would have to give an example for each of those crimes. So, if there's no specific number asking three or two or whatever, so three would be your max, two would be your min. Okay. 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 Good. All right, guys. So if that's um no questions, then very good, ladies. Um and and thank you for that. Okay. So now we have sanctions with Shamara and Bria Butler. Okay, Miss Bullard. So me and Samara did the sanctions. The five sanctioned categories would be counterterrorism, <clears throat> conflict resolution, protection of civilians, non proliferation, and democratization. So, for counterterrorism, counter we had the resolution 1373. This would be the 9 11 attack, attack. So, when the terrorists att attacked the United States. So for sanctions in place, they had restrictions on providing assets to designated persons or entities and restrictions on dealing with assets of designated person or entities, just to name a few. For the con conflict resolution, we have resolution 2231 for Iran. This was in response to Iran's refusal to suspend its uranium enrichment program. So the restrictions they had was on export and import of supply and purchase of certain goods, travel bans on designated persons, restrictions on providing assets to the designated persons or entities. Um, sanction number three would be protection of civilians. So we have the Rwanda Resolution 918. This was to help with security and the protection of displaced persons, refugees and civilians at risk in Rwanda. So the sanction was to impose imposes an arm embargo on Rwanda. Sanction four in the category we would have non-proliferation. That would be resolution 22375 for Korea in response to the nuclear test. So they had a ban on trade of arms and military equipment, ban on import of luxury goods. Um, ban on natural gas imports, freeze assets of individuals involved in the country's nuclear program. And the last one would be democratization. So that resolution, resolution 2653 for Haiti. This was to help tackle the issue 
threatening peace and security within the country. So they had a ban on travel bans, asset freeze, and ban on trade of goods and services. So Samar, you wanna continue with the sanctions framework? Sorry, sure, I can continue with this, the framework. Um, just pulling it up. Okay, so to design a, a sanctions framework, you start by documenting the policies and procedures, including risk assessments. You define the roles and responsibilities, um, raise awareness, communication, and training, monitor and screening, monitoring and screening systems against sanctions lists, and escalations process for decision making, reporting requirements, and requirements for reviewing sanctions related processes. And then, Priya, you want to do the last part? The COVID um, sanctions. Okay, so the sanctions on the COVID. Give me one second, sorry. I can do it, I have it up. Okay, okay go so ahead. One of them was where China sent money to Cuba and Venezuela. Then it was Iran went to the World Bank to borrow $1 million. Donald Trump blocked it because of sanctions and the UK stepped in and loaned Iran 500,000 euros. Cuba was known to have the best doctors in the world and sent doctors to Italy to assist. And the Bahamas helped Dominica by sending Cuba, Cuban doctors to assist. And that's it. Okay, so very, very good and very um, um, good points and, and examples. Um, any questions on sanctions? And, and, and some of y'all worry and y'all spot on. I, I ain't even saying no points, no points or, or what have you. So I'm very pleased so far. Any, any questions? Yes, ma'am, Ms. Bullard. Uh, if we were to answer this question, are we have do we have the list sanction number seven one two four, like or just say what the sanction is and what it was what it was about? Do you want yeah. the actual sanction number? Yes, because if you if it asks you about the categories and you're given exa examples, then you have to quote with you know this resolution number whatever is protection of civilians or or what have you. I mean, it would just help you get full points. If you leave it out, you may get half a point off, or maybe you may lose a point. So if you want full points, yes, you quote the number. And I am certain there's at least two questions on, on, on the exam, you know, the 10 choices. So don't it's very easy to get full points on, on the sanctions question. So don't don't shy away from it. Okay, and any questions or concerns? No, okay, ladies, very good. Thank you for that. Um, Gigi and Latoya, or at least Latoya is no longer, Gigi on risk framework, appetite and risk rating. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. This is gonna be short and sweet. Risk assessment or risk framework, risk appetite. Risk framework is the guidelines are the guidelines used by companies to identify, eliminate, and minimize risk. When being considered, risk identification, um, risk measurement or assessment, risk mitigation, and risk monitoring should be considered. Your company or country's risk framework should be set up to cover the types of customers you take on, the regions you do business with, and the types of crimes most popular in your region, um, which moves on to risk appetite. Risk appetite or risk tolerance is the level of risk your organization is willing to accept or the types of customers or accounts that they decide to onboard. Um, in considering your risk appetite or looking at your risk appetite and onboarding your customers, you need to consider operational risk, um, reputational risk, market risk, credit risk, just to name a few. Um, once your risk framework or risk assessment is set up, 
and your company has decided it's risk tolerance, another method to put in place is your risk rating, which will ensure that those high risk customers um, or any customers at all will stand out if they deviate from what they told you from inception uh, um, um, at onboarding. Um, um, in risk rating, the lower the figure, the less the risk. Um, your risk framework should calculate your customer's risk rating. Your manager shouldn't be guessing or you shouldn't be guessing your customer's risk rating. Um, your ratings should also consist of, like I said before, low, medium, and high ratings uh, and standard industrial classification or SICK code, which differentiates um, between the, the, the business and the industry that you're on taking or the person's career choice. Um, if they are a lawyer, you should have a SICK code for that. And I think there's a national, um, 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 I forgot what the, the acronym is, but it's a national, um, listing that you can go by for these um, um, sick codes. Um, you should also ensure that you categorize your PEPs, your place of domicile, the nationalities, um, and if a person has adverse findings in the media, there should be something to differentiate them from your regular everyday Joe Blues. Um, and lastly, to accommodate your risk rating. Your, your company should also have a sanction screening system, something that you can actually type in the customer's name or maybe their, what you call it, um, nickname, and they would populate so that you can see if that person actually has adverse findings. You can't, you can't just go based on hearsay. And that's it for me. If y'all want me to talk more, I can. Okay, what I what I would add to that is you said um you know differentiate the clients or risk right. rate the clients is also the products and services. Right, 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 that you offer. And then when you spoke on set codes and getting gathering the information, I would throw in methodology there. Okay, risk methodology. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So being able to explain what methodology is. Okay. Where do you get this information from? I get country and domicile ratings from um, Basel Index. I get set okay. codes from wherever you get it from. I get CPI index from Transparency International. So okay. that's that's only two things. I'll add those um, on the, the sheet before I send it out. Okay. 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 Very very good. Um, any any questions or concerns? Okay, y'all you're, you're following this. Is this sufficient information? Um, give, give, me, give me some feedback. It is. Okay. Okay, just let, let me know if, if you all have more questions or uh, at the end, if you feel like you have sufficient information to help, you know, lead you in the right direction to studying, you know, organizing your, your study and your research. Okay, a very very good, Amdia. Um, thank you, Miss um, Miss Bullard. Is there yeah. a is there a quantity of, of words that we have to have um, for the essays? No more than a page, a page and a half, or uh -huh. two pages for the mandatory questions. For the mandatory, okay. Yeah, two pages for the mandatory. No more than a page, a page and a half for the reg other other four questions. Okay. 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 Um. IMF, FATF, CFATF, and AML deficiencies. Nicolette and Satisha. Good afternoon. Um, the IMF conducts financial sector assessments and provides technical assistance to financial sectors. AML and CFT assessments are now a part of the IMF's work. The IMF and the FATF coordinate their activities relating to evaluations and assessments. The FATF is an inter, intergovernmental body whose purpose is to establish internal levels to combat money laundering and the financial of terrorism. The FATF meets several times a year and brings together legal, financial, and law enforcement experts 
from more than 30 countries and a range of international bodies. The FATF undertakes a range of tasks. It identifies and analyzes money laundering, terrorist financing, and other threats to the integrity of the financial system. It develops and refines the international standard of combating money laundering, the financing of terrorism, and proliferation. Um, CF, the CFATF, which is the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force is an organization of 24 states of the Caribbean, Central and South America, which have agreed to implement common countermeasures to address money laundering. It was established as a result of meeting convened in Aruba in May 1990 and Jamaica in November. Mm -hmm. No, no points for that. that. That's too much. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The main objective. The main objective. Yeah. Of, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, you could go ahead with the objectives. Okay. Let me let me just mark this out. Sorry. Okay. The main objective of the CFATF is to achieve um, effective implementation of compliance with the FATF recommendations to prevent and control money laundering, counter the financing of terrorism and proliferation of weapons. Bahamas AML deficiencies. The Bahamas was found to be deficient in 22 of the 40 recommendations included in the FATF neutral evaluation for late 2015. R1. Is it May 2015 or is it June 2017? Ooh. I love the research that. Yeah, so don't don't put yeah. that that date in really relevant. So don't put okay. it in unless okay. you research it properly. We get okay. points off for of that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um R1, which is don't put the R1 either. Oh, wow. <laughs> Okay, I could just go on with um. You you referring to recommendation one? Pare. You referring to recommendation one? Um. Yes, ma'am. Okay, go ahead. So I can carry on with the R one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Assessing risk and applying a risk based approach. Factors underlying ratings are the process of identifying and assessing ML and TF risks through a national risk assessment is still underway. Measures have not been taken as yet to mitigate the ML and TF risk, sorry. Okay, I would not say that because um, the government had promised that um, they were gonna submit the national risk assessment by March. There was no word in the paper that they did and I just saw some correspondence where they did submit it in June 2022. And if you go on the, the um, Basel Committee's website, you will see that the Bahamas rate dropped from 6.43 to 5.93 now. So that means something was done. Again, they didn't write about it. And so just say that, you know, it's <laughs> they're underway. Or mm -hmm. something to that effect, because they're going to check current day, and mm -hmm. there isn't enough information out there for you to confirm that they didn't do it. Okay. You see what I mean? So, uh -huh. you looking at the, did, did you have the update form? Do I have it? Yeah, did you have the update form to the CF, ATF report? Yes, ma'am. All right, and so okay. just go by what the update form says, and the okay. update form says, According to their last, and you could put according to the last correspondence, they were supposed to submit, submit in, in March 2022. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Right. Mm -hmm. um, in order to address the deficiencies, noted the Bahamas utilized the World Bank methodology in the completion of its NAR on Dece December 6, 2017. Just wonder if you're not me scared of saying these dates. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I would just stay away from them. I would just okay. Stay, yeah, okay, yeah, because like I say, and it's not your fault. It's just that a lot of things have been updated and not written in the papers for you to follow it properly. Because we okay. we have been tracking it. 
Okay, all right. Um, the Bahamas identify and assess its ML and TF risks and has developed a risk-based risk approach at various levels of financial sector. And DNF as DNF BPs. Which are what? Don't say these things the, if you don't know what they are. The designated, okay. the designated non-financial business and professions. Yay. Which are what? Give me an example. Who, who are they? Yeah, I'm trying to do this thing. No, because that, that's just it. I, I don't want you to write yeah, things yes. that you don't know. And so that's, that's just an acronym you use and you don't know what that means or you know, who they is. So unless you could do the research, don't 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 put it in your ass. You know they I know if you don't know, just say I don't know. That's fine if you don't know. Okay, so that's fine. That's they're the they're the law firms, the accounting firms, real estate agents. And the real estate firms that have a, a corporate service providers arm, not the criminal lawyers who are there doing the drug dealers and the murderers. But who have corporate service? Okay. okay. Sorry, I just want to make a note of that before. Yeah, I, I just want you to know when you write these things, what you're talking uh -huh. about. Okay. Um, FI, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's why I discourage copy and paste here. If you see a body of work, you have to go and do some research so you can speak knowledgefully to it. You know? To avoid all this writing, I can I, 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 I make you all uh, stand up in front of the class and answer the questions out loud and prove your understanding, and that's how you get points. The sense of writing is too much. But anyway, go ahead. Jesus, what did you understand? <laughs> I understand. Comprehension. Comprehension is key. Um, let me stop. Okay, so you're on the right track in, in terms of. Yeah, the Bahamas submitted it. Um, um, we were deficient in recommendation one. They they did some updates. Uh huh. Go on. Um. The FIs are also required to make sorry to take an account risk assessment when applying CDD measures. FIs <coughs> are not permitted to apply. Simplify CDD when they are sorry when there is a suspicious a suspicion of activities related to any identified risk. No, no, no. Just we talking about the AML deficiencies of the bars. But I didn't pass that. Okay. Right. Yeah, but you 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 said recommendation one, right? Mm -hmm. The risk based approach, right? And then say what was updated. The FTRA Section 5 was updated that made it mandatory for SFI, supervised financial institutions, to conduct a, a, a risk assessment. And then on the country level, uh, the industry, the, the financial services industry had to come together and then each um, um, regulator sub made a submission so that the country's risk rating can, can be complete. Because we haven't submitted anything since 250 or, or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and it, it was promised that we would make a submission to get a country's risk rating by March of 2023. Okay. Sorry, that's why I took all the unnecessary information. I have to go. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so that's your first, that's your first AML deficiency. What's your next that's one? Um, R2, which is National Cooperation and Coordination. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what would, um, how would we be deficient? Um, national AML and CFD policies have not yet been informed by risk identify as the NRA process is still underway. No clarity with respect to the designation of an authority the coordination or other mechanism that is responsible for AML and CFC policies. There is no cooperation and coordination to combat financing of proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. Then I went on to R10, which is customer due diligence. But you want to tell us what the Bahamas do to correct R2? 
Okay, so you have to research what they did. They, up, they updated the Terrorism Act, which was another deficient and to, to cover proliferation as well. Okay, so you could research that. Then you go with your last one is R what? ARTA, which is customer due diligence. Uh, uh huh. So what happened? What was deficient there? Um, CDP measures were limited only to occasional cash transactions over fifteen thousand, um, including link transactions, rather than any occasional transactions over fifteen thousand. Okay. Um, and what did we do? What did we do to correct that? Okay, and so one of the things I just know off the top of the head, my head, we moved from the rules-based approach that included thresholds to the risk-based approach. And so rather than saying 10,000, 5,000, or 15,000, we now uh, check anything outside of your profile. So if you only removed, we removed the thresholds. Okay. All right. And um, no requirements for the identification for the protection of trust. Simplified CDD measures are not based on risk assessment, including analysis of risk by the country and the FIs. Okay, right okay. okay, good. Yeah, so you want to list, there were 22 deficiencies. You want to list at least three of those deficiencies and you want to research what did the Bahamas do to satisfy these deficiencies. Okay. We updated the law, we implemented this procedure, this policy, or what happened. Okay. Ms. Bullock, can we list the action plans instead, or, or you just want the deficiencies with the outline? Well, you, need, the the, you could need the deficiency and then the action plan or the remedy. Okay. Yeah. Whichever one you, you could research and find enough information on. And that's why I said that update, she tells you how we fixed it or what we did to fix it. Okay, any other questions or concerns? We, we good? Um, that's it, Satish. You have anything else to add or no? We good with that? No, ma'am. That's it. Okay. Okay. Good. Very yeah, good. Yeah, I'm going to Okay. Um, tax avoidance, free roll. Did we find out, Andrini? Mm -hmm. Priya? No, you didn't find. No, I didn't find them. No. Okay. So. Okay. So I did the points on. Tax avoidance, tax evasion, WA, W9, and WBEN E forms. So I'll start off by saying the US income system is based on the idea of voluntary compliance. And this is this is a system of compliance which relies on individual citizens to report their income freely and voluntarily, calculate their tax liability correctly, and file a tax return on time. But that being said, Tax avoidance, which is lawful, is the use of legal methods of reducing taxable income or tax owed. It is an action taken to lessen tax liability and maximize after-tax income. It also includes claiming allowed tax deductions, tax deductions, and tax credits, which are common tactics as is investing in tax advantage accounts, such as IRAs and 401ks. On the other hand, tax evasion, which is unlawful, is the use of illegal methods of concealing income or information from the IRS or other tax authorities. Tax evasion can also can result in fines, penalties, or even prison time. Um, like I said, example. it's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Is a criminal offense that involves cheating tax authorities through fraud or deceitful concealment of assets or earnings and the failment, the failure to pay or, oh, failure to pay or a deliberate underpayment of taxes can result in jail time and penalties. You say you want an example of tax evasion? And one of avoidance. So tax avoidance, an example of tax avoidance would be a citizen 
basically using their deductions to pay their taxes. Like, um, I think, you know, like when you go away and persons, they can claim back their taxes based off of what they purchase when they present their receipts. Okay. Or like um, when persons go to Europe and they buy like, I guess, um, expensive or luxury goods, when they present their receipts to customs and the border, they can get their tax payments back off of those luxury goods. Whereas tax evasion is the person basically trying to avoid paying their taxes on the whole. So basically persons lying on their forms or not filing their taxes see, at all. And, and, and that's what I see. A lot of people making up scenarios. I want a, an actual case. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, an actual case, not a scenario. Okay, out to wash for tax um of, of of avoidance, where they they used the wrong calculations on the washes they was bringing in. Okay, tax avoidance could possibly be, uh, you get in an energy efficient car, right? You would find a case on evasion because evasion is wrong. You wouldn't find a case on avoidance. Okay, I, it again. I said there would be no case on avoidance, right? That's where you could give an example, but an actual case would be for evasion. It have to be a behemoth example. It don't have to be behemoth. Okay, I, I, I found but it. There are two, that, that same superwash case, they were being charged with evasion. However, they were able to prove that the customs uh, broke up firm made the mistake and not them. What about so the Shakira case, Miss Bullet? Shakira case is a, a case of evasion, yes, and that's related to the Bahamas. Okay. So super wash and Shakira. Yeah, are the two cases, and there are many other U.S. cases online. But okay, yeah, I was going to give a U.S. case, but yeah. No. Yeah, a I lot of uh, this is a very another easy question to answer, but people get confused about the avoidance versus evasion. Don't get confused. You give an example for the avoidance, you give an actual case for the evasion. Okay. Okay. I'll write that down. Excellent. Okay, so moving on to the W8 the W-9 and the Benny forms. So the W-8 Ben form is an IRS, which is Internal Revenue Service mandated form to collect correct non-resident aliens, taxpayer information for individuals reporting for individuals for reporting purposes and to document their status for tax reporting purposes. A NRA or a non-resident alien is a any individual who is not a U.S. citizen or a U.S. national or anyone who has not passed the green card test to get citizenship or American citizenship. The W-8 okay. Benji form. Tell us what the W-8 form, who was signed the W-8? I Hello? get yeah, I, yeah, Who was signed the W Benji? Who was signed the W-9? So that's all you want me to say? That's all I want you to say because I we don't oh. want information overloaded. Okay, then. So, and then FACA and CRS, if you answer in this tax question, you need to know FACA, what is FACA and what is CRS. Okay. So, who signs the W-8 form? Non-U.S. residents. Who signs the W-9 form? U.S. residents or U.S. person. And I already explained what a U.S. person is. Um, it can also be signed on a on behalf of an organization by a US person, the W-9. Um, you drop me right off with the- um, And the w -Ben -E. And the w -Ben -E is an entity form and it is signed by the BO of the entity, along with like the form has a section where you have, where you fill out who's the BO and all relevant information. The CRS form is the common reporting standards form um, 
this is usually filled out by the along with the W band form and along with the FATCA form. Um, yeah, because FATCA is US and mm -hmm. CRS is the rest of the world. Spain, Switzerland, France, the rest of the world. Okay, so yeah, FATCA. So Sort of the CRS is the rest of the world. Taxes for the rest of the world. So the CRS corresponds with the W8 and the FACA corresponds with the W9 because FACA is US. Right? I wouldn't say corresponds. Everybody, when you open an account, it's an hour required. Everybody has to sign the CRS form and the W8, W9 or the WB Benny, depending on who you are. So if you are foreign to the US entity, you sign the W Ben E. If you are a foreign individual, you sign the W8. If you are a US individual, you sign the W9. Then the CRS form is filled out to say which country you are from. I am foreign to the US, so I'm either from the Bahamas, from Spain, from Switzerland, or what have you, and so you, you, you sign that. And there are three different types. There's a controlling person form, there's an individual form, and there's an entity form. It just depends on which category you fall in, you, you sign those forms. What about the FACA? Right, so you sign both. You sign the FACA form and you sign the CRS form. No, I mean, like I you just explained the CRS form. I was asking to explain the FACA form. The fat the FATCA form is the U US form is the W A W nine or the W B Benny. That's that's the oh form. that's what you were saying. Okay. Yeah, those three fall under the FATCA form or your institution just because those um forms expire and they want a longer expiry date on it, they will put their logo on the W8, W9 and Benny and say, this is our internal form that expires every 10 years. Okay. Some companies don't go through that. They just uh, update because the customer's already high, medium or low. And so they refresh those forms every three years, but you cannot trade in the market if those forms are expired, it's against the law. You could get the company could get shut down or get a fine for allowing persons to trade with an expired form. Okay. Yeah. And I think they expire every three years, right? Yeah, every three years. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, any any questions or concerns for tax? So Miss Bullard, you just say who signs it? No details about the forms. No, I mean it'll have to be multiple choice. Oh, okay. well, you know, so it, it, it is not necessarily an essay on, on those forms. It probably will be in the multiple choice. Okay, then that makes yeah. sense. And then probably an essay on FAC and CRS or an essay mm -hmm. on avoidance and evasion. Okay, and then that's what we will give the examples. Right. Okay. Right. Okay, yeah. any, any, any questions or concerns? Ms. Bullock, can you um, confirm, can you um, speak again about CRS, please? I'm a little unclear. This is okay. Shana. Okay, so each after FACA, which is the US um, um, tax, was so successful and the US was successful in, in um, getting their monies from um, these offshore countries, the rest of the world followed suit. And so instead of each country then saying, you know, I, you, they have their own tax form. The, organ, um, the OECD came up with a form and they call it common reporting standard. So if you are outside of the US, then you sign um, a form stating which country you are from and which that means you are, uh, if they have income tax, you are required to pay a portion of your salary to that country, okay? So taxes in the US are between 15 and 30%. And then taxes in Spain and Canada, you know, everybody wants to move to Canada, but the taxes are between 15 and 35%. Okay, and you pay that into your country and they fix the roads, the hospitals, the schools, stuff like that. Okay, so it's the rest of the world. The US has its own and then the rest of the world falls under 
CRS. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, any, any other questions? No? Okay, um, moving right along. We culture, so Demetria and Avery. Hi, good afternoon. All right, I'll start it off and I think Demetria will finish it. Um, the money laundering officer is a corporate official who is responsible for ensuring that the company and its employees are complying with regulations and also complying with internal policies and procedures. The MLO oversees an organization's AML CFT systems and is the main point of inquiry for any queries or issues with money laundering activity. If a company is found not to have effective AML systems in place, the MLO, MLRO could personally face substantial fines and potentially even possible imprisonment. MLROs must be approved by the regulars. In the Bahamas, that would be the Security Commissions, the Insurance Commissions, the Compliance Commissions, or the Gaming Board, or the Central Bank, sorry. The MLR is also registered with the FIU and plays a crucial role in any financial services organization's governance, risk, and compliance program. MLROs should be, should be senior management report to the Board of Directors on the business risk of exposure to money laundering and what steps can be taken to mitigate the risk involved. The MRO should also be involved in identifying where there's a need for AML and CFT training. So Demetria will go through some more of the duties. Okay, some more duties include, they ensure that the company's risk management policies, risk assessment profile and application are adequately documented. They develop internal procedures in line with the requirements of the legislation and the relevant industry guidance documenting the firm's risk-based strategies and the basis for the risk assessment and monitoring to ensure the immediate investigation of all suspicious activity reports are received. They ensure to submit the STR to the relevant law enforcement agency or the FIU they ensure that staff are aware of their personal obligations and the company's policies and procedures that are on the basis of the company's risk-based approach. Okay, they ensure that the staff comply with the stated policy and monitor operations and development. They ensure that the relevant staff are adequately trained in money laundering and terrorist finance prevention, regularly reviewing they regularly review the effectiveness of the money laundering compliance policies. They provide management information necessary, including an annual and monthly board report for the bank's board and senior management. And they um, remain aware of, of any relevant sanctions, pro prohibitions, advisory notices, and um, they promptly respond to any reasonable requests for information from the regulator and or the law enforcement agencies. And they respond to production orders. That's an example of the last point. They respond to production orders sent from the FIU. And they also give, they, they have the notices that come from Central Bank, from the, from Central Bank, um, Central Bank's Bank Supervision Department. So in summary, the, the, the compliance department under the MLRO is an integral part of any financial organization in detecting risk that may be detrimental to the organization's functions and reputation. The MLRO is responsible for approving bank opening processes and FATCA reporting. And they can monitor um, accounts but people who like deposit anything over the 10,000 threshold via an automated monitoring tool. For, for an example, there's one that, that we was called simply, simply risk. They answer alerts generated by large transactions to make sure that the people are staying in line with their, their stated mandated account activity. 
and they, they monitor high risk people and PEPs because those um, are required to do enhance due diligence on those type of people and they monitor the sanctions list and they conduct conformance reviews on institutions where they may have branches. For example, um, you might have a branch in Nassau Freeboard and Abaco. They'll conduct conformance reviews on each branch to ensure that the whole company is adherent to the policies and functions of the company. And that's it. Okay, so what do we have with culture though? I, I figured that that's basically the culture of the MLRO and what he does in his job. No, no, no. The culture is, is you know, the respect for the AML framework, um, mm -hmm. the positive attitude towards, you know, some people feel like, oh, this is, um, you know, hampering the ease of doing business. We don't have time to. It doesn't make know, sense. <laughs> Sorry? It doesn't make a business a profit or anything like that. Right, right, right. right. And so culture is more geared towards the attitude um, of, of the company, or does the MLRO have an open door policy? Uh, you know, is training, people still ducking out on training, or everybody showing up? You know, stuff like that. Well, they wear too many hats. Right. If they, yeah, if they wear too many hats, like, Everybody overworking on the bed and, and nobody is saying anything about it. And so we can't give proper oversight because the, the company is, you know, revenue driven. And then we know compliance makes no money for the business. And so therefore they're getting the sales, getting all of the um budget. Budget, yeah. And so we understand, you know. So you want to talk about, you know, those type of issues that could possibly happen if the culture is not, you know? A good one. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, yeah. Okay, good. Um, any, any questions? No, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so, so I have a question. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, will that come as some type of essay question on the exam? Or yeah, that will come as an uh, essay question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Alicia and Shauna, STR monitoring cooperation with the authorities. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> suspicious transaction report, STR. STR is a report that contains information from anyone who is a part of the general public or an individual who has concerns, suspicions, fe fears, gut feelings, and feelings of discomfort about clients or third parties. STRs can be filed by the general public, both individuals, and businesses once they observe questionable activities. In order to categorize a suspicious transaction from an unusual transaction, the following must be reviewed. Historical activity of <clears throat> the account slash client, pair profile review, and expectations and comparators with the individual profile. The first step in determining a suspicious transaction is to observe or monitor a client's normal expected activity and then conduct an investigation on them until you feel comfortable. If you determine that the client transactions are complex, makes no economic sense, out of size, no reasonable explanation, transfers using high-risk jurisdictions and transactions are just under the threshold of 15,000, you can fill out an SDR form. All transactions- I wouldn't go, I wouldn't remember now, we're <clears throat> moving away from the risk rule space, even though in the organization, <clears throat> people still using the $1,500,000 threshold. Mm -hmm. We moved away from the 
rules-based approach to the risk-based approach. So if you only make $2,000 a week, should you not be filling out the SDS? I just wouldn't include that. I know the banks are still doing it, but they okay. are eventually going to rule that out. Okay. So we will yeah. we'll omit that. Yeah. All, all transactions deemed suspicious by staff member are to be reported to the money laundering officer. That's the MLRO of the firm or business. MLRO is responsible to determine if the information received should be reported to the financial intelligence unit. The statutory reporting obligations extend to existing and potential clients. All STR forms are reviewed and analyzed by the FIU. The filing of an STR in good faith will not be treated as a breach of confidentiality and will not give rise to any civil liability. <clears throat> That's section 43 of POCA. A suspicious transaction report once filed with the FIU can be forwarded to the Royal Bahamas Police Force, that's the RBPF, in the information is deemed, sorry, if the information is deemed proven. Monitoring systems. Go ahead, Alicia. Good evening. Um, for the monitoring systems, we have we have a review of customers' due diligence on your know your customers forms. Um, the scanning of PEP accounts and review of the sanction, the sanction list regularly, annual AML training and risk monitoring of employees, the usage, we have the monitoring of funds to ensure that the transaction do not go over a certain threshold, but I believe you said we should cut that out. Um, conduct a sample review of record retention to ensure that it complies with the regulatory bodies. Yeah, cut it out, but just say if they don't go outside their profile. Okay. Over a threshold, it's outside their profile. Um, profile? Okay. Yeah. Complete PDR audit reviews on the day-to-day -day operations of the business. Um, the frequency of an account being monitored should be, should be derived from the risk assessment conducted on the client. So the for example, rating. I mean, yes, the risk rating on the client. So for example, higher risk rated accounts should be monitored more frequently. The usage of a anti-money money laundering and counter terrorist financing calendar to ensure reports are being submitted in a timely manner to the regulators. And we also have a firm must ensure that its policy and procedures are current day to reflect any changes issued by its regulators or legislation. Okay, but normally, you know, firms are just using world check, Lexus mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Right. I yeah, mean, so you don't have to go into details. Like, I, I feel like that's just too much information you might get points for. Okay, so just yeah. keep up with yeah. the um systems, what they use yeah. now, software, yeah. I mean. Yeah. Okay. Um, the last group we have is um, cooperation with authorities. Shana. <laughs> Okay, cooperation with authorities. The MLRO duties is to ensure that the line of communication is effective with law enforcement. So controls should be put in place to manage the process of responding to formal and informal requests. In the event of the MLRO engaging with the authorities, the following should be established. A single person should be appointed as the contact person, which can be the compliance officer or the MLRO. A formal process should be put in place for logging, processing, and tracing of requests. A quality audit conducted on the SDR process. A business should create an SDR policy, which outlines how information should be submitted to the FIU regarding the SDR filing. The MLRO is expected to analyze the wording of consent letters. An SDR should be filed immediately and consent to proceed obtained in the event of suspicion where you arises. Get that, where, where that written just the law says in a reasonable time frame, Shona? Sorry? Who tell you our SDR should be fi filed immediately? The law says <laughs> in a reasonable time frame. Remember when we looked at failing to disclose? Well, it says whenever reasonable. So how you could put that? I got, I got this information from the tax. Okay, whenever it's reasonable. 
So I'm changing it to whenever it's I mean, I just say it. I just, I just pull in your leg. Of course. <laughs> no, it should be. I just say what the, the law says. Mm -hmm. Remember when but we looked when, at when, when, to is, when, when is whenever is reasonable? That could, okay. be, that right. could be 10 exactly. years from now. It, it, exactly. Exactly. I just pull in your leg. Okay, go ahead. You all fall right away, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but the key, the key is not to give more information and right remember your duty of confidentiality yes right and i turn this back over to alicia to complete okay, okay. a business must receive consent from the financial intelligence unit prior to proceeding with a transaction once filed as a suspicious transaction in order to avoid breach of confidential confidentiality between a company and its clients, the MLO and other employees of the company should only provide information when requested by authorities. Companies cannot tell a customer that a transaction or activity is delayed when a report has been made under the Proceeds of Crime Act, which is POCA. The MLRO must avoid committing tipping off offenses. In the event a staff member is implicated of a crime, the company should not intervene in the in the arrest from the authorities. Okay. That's all we have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So do you have any fines on if you don't file the SDR or if you fail to disclose? No, we should we answer that yeah. as well? Yeah, yeah. If you answer in that question, if if the question asks for it, I think there is a question that asks for fines. Okay, so I'll yeah. add that then, Shauna. Right. Okay. 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 All right, good. Um, any any questions? No? Okay. Okay. Um, recommendation one, Basel Committee methodology. Um, research current local examples, Geraldo and Diazman. Well, good night, everybody. Well, I haven't seen Diazman short of for class tonight. So I guess I'll read what I have. So far, okay, recommendation one, the PSO committee methodology. The Financial Action Task Force is an intergovernmental body whose purpose is to establish international no, levels no, to no, combat. No, 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 no points for that. Yeah. What does recommendation one say? Okay, all right. Recommendation one states that every country should identify, assess, and understand the money laundering and terrorist financing risk for their country, and that they should take action, including designating authority or mechanism to coordinate and assess the risks and apply the risk, apply the resources to mitigate those risks. Okay. In other so words, put controls in place to control those risks. Controls in place, okay. To control those risks. And, and that's it for recommendation one. Okay, then we will go on to the Basel Committee methodology. Okay. According to the Basel AML Index, which is a global public ranking system for jurisdictions who are being evaluated by the Financial Action Task Force regarding their money laundering and terrorist financing risk. The Bahamas ranked 34 amongst various jurisdictions and it scored and received a score of 5.93 overall out of a zero to 10 scale system, which 10 indicating a high risk. According to the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force Mutual Evaluation Port 2017 for the Bahamas, the Bahamas was deficient in 22 of the 40 recommendations. No, the no, no. Scored... no, 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 I don't speak to methodology. No? Us being deficient, this, this is the methodology of the Basel That's... Committee. That's what the question That's... asks. Basel okay. AML Index. Okay. Methodology. Well, I have, I have that. Domain one, domain two, domain, domain three, and domain four, and domain five. Don't go. Oh. Further. Okay. Okay. All right. That's what we want to talk about in terms of methodology. Okay. okay. So I have I have the domain one through five, which is the quality of the AML CFT framework. Um, domain two is the corruption and bribery risk. Domain three, financial transparency and standards. Domain four, public transparency and accountability. And domain five, political and legal risk. Now I've given an example for domain one, which speaks to the quality of the AML and CFT framework based on rec, um, the Bahamas was partially compliant for recommendation one. And during the on-site visit from the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force, 
The Bahamas was still completing its money laundering and tariff financing national risk assessment. The Bahamas- okay, You could just say that we were deficient in 22 and now we are largely compliant. I think in 30 and compliant in 10, something to that effect. Largely compliant in 30? Yeah, but you have to Google it and see how much we are largely out there on the internet somewhere. Okay. Or, but you could, or if you don't want to get into the numbers, you could say that we has, have satisfied the majority of the 22 that were deficient. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the Bahamas corrected that, corrected the issue for the recommendation on utilizing the World Bank methodology to complete the national risk assessment. That's all I have here. Okay. And it, it, yeah, it just asks you, um, um, for examples, and you can look right on um, the update form and get some examples of, as to what they did to satisfy recommendation one. Okay. Okay, remember there were four chapters on risk. So maybe there could be a minimum three questions on risk. You could avoid them completely or answer all. If you answer in the questions on risk and you understand it, then I would suggest that you answer all. Okay. Okay. How many? How many examples we would need as relates to? Um, no the more. Basic... Remember three. No more. No. no. Yeah, two minimum, three the most. That's if I speak into recommendation one under the AML and CFD framework. Um, domain one. What if I look at domain two as a race that are corruption and bribery risk under the what is the transparency? You could, because that's the topic of the whole corruption. exam, right? The whole exam is bribery and corruption, so it'll be relevant. Okay. So you could use that for your question one and question eight if that's what you answer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any any questions or concerns? Can you say that one more time, please? Could I say what one more time? You said something about question one and question if you choose right. to. He asked, he asked if, um, about bribery and corruption, right? And I said, if you go and do, using an example on bribery and corruption, you could also use that for question one. Thank you. Because they, they up, like, updated those laws. Um, Ms. Bullard, I think I found the fund. I just wanted to make sure before I add it in. Is it the $50,000 fine and two years imprisonment? You're looking at poker 2000 and, and, and 18? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What, what the fine is for failing to disclose? I believe they said if you haven't um, provided any information requested by the FAU, it is. What fine, fine are you looking for? Are you looking for the for SDR? For SDRs? Yes. So um, it's the FTRA. I think section 25 tells the fine. Okay. I, I, I have to look. I have it written somewhere. Okay. Yeah. I believe I found it. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, Renita and Hasty, section 3. One nine is the Patriot Act. Good evening. Um, so section 319 of the um, Patriot Act. On October 26, 2001, President George W. Bush signed into law the uniting and strengthening America by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism act, also known as the USA Patriot Act. And it speaks to interbank accounts and the 120 hour rule, subpoenas for correspondent records and record keeping. Okay. Under the 120 hour rule, not later than 120 hours after receiving a request by an appropriate federal banking agency for information related to AML compliance, by a covered financial institution or a customer of such institution, a covered financial institution shall provide to the appropriate 
agency information and account documentation for any account opened, maintained, administered, or managed in the United States by the covered financial institution. Subpoena and summons for correspondent of account records. It authorizes the Secretary of the Treasury or the Attorney General to serve a summons or subpoena upon a foreign bank maintaining a correspondent account in the US and to require records related to such correspondent account, including records maintained outside of the US relating to the deposit of funds in the foreign bank, into the foreign bank. The significance of this provision is that it allows the, Ju the Justice Department or the Treasury Department to obtain records from a foreign bank located outside the US without the cooperation of the foreign bank's government under a mutual legal assistance treaty. If the foreign bank fails to comply with any summons or subpoena for records, the covered financial institution which maintains the corresponding account for the foreign bank must, upon notice from the Secretary of the Treasury or the Attorney General, close the account or face civil penalties of up to $10,000 per day until the corresponding um, relationship is terminated. Uh, record keeping requirements. Um, additional, record, additional record keeping requirements on covered financial institutions, which maintain corresponding accounts in the US for foreign banks on the foreign bank and maintain the records in the United States, identifying the owners of such accounts and the name and address of a person residing in the US authorized to accept legal process for records regarding the corresponding account and to respond within seven days after receipt of a written request from a federal law enforcement officer for information required on the foreign bank or the, or the accounts. That's it. Okay, very good HD on point. Um, the only ex only other thing I could see is you throwing in there's an extra territorial arm of the US dollar and, and that's about it, but you answered the question. So very actually, we, thank you for that. We did actually help speak to that, but um, okay. in combining, we end up, I end up missing that out, sorry. Okay, okay, but that, yeah, that's the only other thing like I could throw in there. Okay, um, any, any questions? Again, very people tend to stay away from these questions, but again, to me, sanctions, 319, taxes, they are all new to the Bahamas. However, very easy, we need to understand them and they are very easy to answer. Very question, easy to put, get 10 full points on those questions. Okay, so don't, like I said, don't, don't shy from it. Sorry, AC, go ahead. Do you want me to speak to what you was just saying? Yeah, go ahead them? if you have the information. Okay, US money has an extraterritorial arm, meaning it is accepted in most countries, especially to conduct wire transfers. So if um, they want to prosecute you, they can, they can, and it's up to your country to support or deny help with the extradition. extradition. Right, okay, good, good, very good. Um, any questions? No, you're pretty quiet, okay. All right, um, customer due diligence, enhanced due diligence, Gator and Alton. Good evening. Customer due diligence and enhanced due diligence. Customer due diligence is the KYC process that involves verifying whether information provided by the client is true and correct before beginning a relationship with the client. Um, how do you went out? I can't hear you. I don't know. That's probably my internet. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah Claire. Mm -hmm. All right. Customer due diligence is the KYC process that involves verifying whether information that is provided by the clients is true and correct before beginning a relationship with the client or the entity or allowing a transaction. In layman terms, this is the gathering of all relevant information about a customer's affair prior to verifying and authorizing transactions. The FATF Recommendation 10 prohibits financial institutions from opening accounts anonymously or under 
fictitious name. The interpretive note to recommendation 10 requires firms to apply customer due, to, customer due diligence to accurately identify, verify, understand the nature or purpose, and continuously monitor the customer's accounts. Institution that implements the KYC or the AML and the CDD measures under the following circumstances by verifying their identification before conducting business, record keeping for up to five years, as, as in recommendations, recommendation 11 states, identifying the political exposure. Examine. Okay, you're breaking up. We, 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 we can't hear you. I don't know anybody else. Is it just me or can you all hear her? Everybody can hear me besides Miss Bullard? No, it's you breaking know, up. It's breaking up. Well, darling, I up. really don't know what seems to be going on my internet. Um, like it, um, Shalisa, um, Gator, I don't know if you want to finish it off because I don't know, something seems to be going on on my internet. Okay, so this will probably be a scenario question. And mm -hmm. so she's already given us like the groundwork. You verify in KYC documentation. Um, you identify and then you monitor it and you keep it records. Um, Shalisa, tell us about enhanced due diligence. Who, who, who do we carry that out on? Okay, so, I mean, so there are two international standards that apply or risk based approach to due diligence. That's the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision, Customer Due Diligence for Banks, and the 40 AML CTF recommendations revised 2012 to determine whether the information provided to identify the identity of a natural person. Don't put revised 2012 because that had not been revised 2019 and 2020. So don't oh. say that. Okay. So to determine whether the information provided to identify the identity of a natural person or entity is sufficient, a risk-based approach is used. As a result, it is, it is possible to determine whether simplified or enhanced due diligence is required. So for simplify, that's the lowest level of assessment where the risk is lower. For example, less ongoing monitoring. The decisions to apply to the diligence must be documented. No, no, no. We want to hear about enhance. Uh, we don't want to hear about simplify. Oh, okay. okay, so enhance, it, re it requires firms to go further with, within investigations and is specifically designed for high, handling the high risk clients. Senior management or the board signs off on accounts or transactions above a certain threshold. Accounts are revised on an annual basis. Extensive reviews and background checks are necessary via Word Check, Lexus Nexus, Proxima Report, Google Search, Google Search, etc. Both sources of funds and sources of structure of wealth should be obtained. Occasional or frequent contact with pets or clients that issue bearer shares. Okay, and so what would be identified as, as high risk? Um, if the scenario said this person has a bear share account, if this scenario says they're an ambassador or a top ranking official, um, if they do business in gas and oil um, or diamonds, um, yeah, and then if they go outside, if they open an account with low thresholds that have been verified and now they say we are government employee and we're just gonna deposit $2,000 a month. And then each week they deposit in the $2,000 so opening, hoping that you don't recognize that they are depositing every week. Okay, so you call that smurfing. So those types of um, issues would, would um, make you carry out we assess the account um, with the deemed suspicious and, and, and they are the, um, I guess, indicators that you would notice as, as high risk or to categorize the account as, as PEP and needing um, annual reviews, like Gita said, um, extra monitoring, Google searches, proximal report if necessary. And, and then, an executive committee approval or the board approval if it's a pair. Okay. Understood. Okay. Okay, guys. 
Okay, well, um, that's the review sheet. So let me let me know if you have questions or concerns or any other question. Um, Ms. Bullard, can you go over those homework multiple choice questions, please? Which may be, You know, the homework sheet that you gave us, there's like four multiple choice questions. I might know the answer. And which chapter? Which chapter is it? It just has multiple choice questions on the, I don't remember it saying a chapter in particular. Yeah, but the, the homework or classwork? Classwork, sorry. Yeah, so each classwork has a chapter. Uh, I guess it's chapter four and five. Yeah, there's risk management. Let me see, okay. I just have to pull it up one second. Okay, so um, in chapter four and five, in determining what risk a customer poses, which consideration should not be a major factor. Come on, class, participate. D this Number is very... eight. Okay, why? Because I should have model what um, the airport doesn't matter if you're black or white, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, or if you're male or female. Okay, very good. Um, which of the following statements is not correct in relation to risk rating? Ms. Bullet, I'm trying to pull it up. What question this is? Let's see. Multiple choice. Which number you want to? I, I correct it on the screen. Okay. Okay. That's what you're asking for? Yes, that's what I was okay. asking. Okay. Okay. Which of the following statements is not correct in relation to risk rating? Every company's risk rating framework should be approved by its board of directors. Directors, uh, yes or no? B, B is, is not correct. I would be. Enhanced due diligence isn't performed on every customer. Every customer yeah. Correct. Correct. Okay, very good. Um, a compliance officer receives notice of a government update including the names of the latest terrorists sanctioned by the United Nations Security Council. Which would be the most appropriate step to take? B? I put B. Updating yeah, the, the, the sanctions persons. Correct, because yeah. the next board board um, meeting might be Maybe, yeah. three, three months away, you know, and that's when you give an update. Okay, right. but you update the monitoring software. So if they try to infiltrate your organization, you get a block, right? When you, because normally people um, do a system scan. Okay, a risk-based approach includes all of the following except D. D. Show us D. No, e. I put A for that. B is C because management, management. A or D, man. No, it's B because management shouldn't have to um um differentiate your system that's in place should should be um doing that for you. This I think I think I think it's C. I think it's D. Ms. Bullet, what do you think? I think it's A. I, I can point you as and write exactly where it is. And, and, and then you'll tell me because I think, wait, let me find it first before I say what I think. I think it's D. Yeah, I'm going with D too. I think it's D because the cost shouldn't have nothing to do with um, the risk space approach. Yeah, because you you know where to put your resources. Remember, enhanced due diligence people um, get charged fifteen hundred dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And so and you need senior people. You need senior people on the high risk. But I mean, so people so, on the low risk. So so, so, so that so is included. Is this? this this question is asking except the following. So I say oh, a. Oh, oh, oh. So which which one it is, Miss Bullet? A. Oh, thank you. 
I don't like multiple choice. Neither me because <laughs> I got that question so confusing. Because yeah, it, it, it said accept the following. So that's why I said you 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 oh, need management to differentiate. You have to read that good. You have to read that good. It that was so tricky. Identification reflect risk characteristics. Miss Bullet, yeah. explain. Explain it some more, please. Because I still lost. Again, look 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 in the book. Look in the book on chapter five. That's where the questions come from. That's beginning the chapter five. A risk-based approach to money laundering terrorist risks allows the company to be flexible when deciding where to concentrate their efforts. A risk-based approach includes all of the following except number one, Shit. number eight. <laughs> that's still a, that's still a not enough because this the beginning of the chapter is a risk-based approach. A risk-based approach to money laundering terrorist risks allows the company you? to be flexible. You could hear me. See how these how these questions are written. Miss Bullet, you all write the question. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's this is what I'm saying. It's the least is is just it's the least likely answer. Okay, ensuring customers' identification reflect the risk characteristics. <laughs> what is the customer identification? The passport, right? Hello. What you ask, Miss Fuller? Yeah. I said, what, what is the, what is, what, 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 when you say a customer's, eye, let's take off identification, if you say a customer's ID. Yeah. How could, could a ID itself reflect risk characteristics? That's true. It's a bad question. I don't like it either because it, it, all it, these it, questions, bad questions. Yeah, okay, but that's why we give them to you for practice. So the answer is A? Yeah. Yeah, because your yeah, passport or your ID can't really tell what you used to. You can't tell right. by looking at that for true. And if you study from the book, you would see the other three. It right there. Yeah, I see it there. You see that's it there, where right? I get, okay. That's where I get my answer from. Okay. I'm sorry, I, I, I will make sure that that's not on the exam. No, you need to put that one. How many, how many multiple choices are we having? 15. Um, it's 15, okay. They were two points each, I know what I, I don't yeah. know. But like I said, try, I get you two points. Remember to write you to questions. You put your name on every page, label each question with the proper number and write to the front page, did I answer the multiple choice, yes or no? Oh, okay. Okay, because some people save the multiple choice for last, and we've had one or two issues, but you can save it for last once, like I say, label your paper properly and, and make sure all your pages are stapled. We write now, black can, sheet day. Yeah, they are going to give you a booklet, and sometimes people ask for the extra paper, right? And uh -huh. so at the end, when you finish, put that there are, are 10 pages. One of 10, two of 10, three of 10, label it at the end. And all of that helps. Because it's, it's always write your name uh, on all the pages. Yeah, or people don't write their names and they don't number <laughs> and they don't start with, you know what I mean? Like th there are three risk questions. We don't know if you're answering question one, eight, or seven on risk. Like, you know, so please. That's very important to, to number. Miss, Miss and, and Blood, like five essay questions, right? Four, yeah. four is optional. I mean, not optional. We could put, pick between four and one is mandatory, right? Correct. Okay. Miss Bullet, how much choices are we gonna have in total? Ten. Okay. Okay, and like I said, if you answer in risk, answer all the risk questions. If you answer in sanctions, answer all the sanction questions. Ms. Bullet, can we, can we get the recording soon? Yeah, okay. I, I'm going to send an email to Miguel right now, letting him know that this is the review class. Please, uh, please, as quickly as possible. And you say it's three risk-based questions, right? 
Sorry. No, no, I'm just saying this was four chapters. I've seen exams. I can't tell you exactly how many risk questions there are, but I'm saying more than likely. I've seen exams with four risk questions. It, 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 it could be one or two, but I'm just saying. If you do see four and you answer in risk, then answer all on this. But be careful not to say the exact same thing that you say in one, two, three, and four. No, I'm Miss Balloon. If it's the question I'm asking, the same thing, I'm going to say the same thing. I'm just going to say it a different way. Well, okay, fine. But I, 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 people, I am telling you from experience that you get full points on the first question, no, no points on the second, no points on the third, none on the fourth. Yeah, but it ain't to be asking the same thing relative to risk. I am just saying from my experience here, what has happened, what I've seen, what people do, write the same thing four times. Come on. Come on. <laughs> so, Ms. Bullet, we have to use quotes in these essays. Yeah, show. please just say according to where you get your information from the Nassau Guardian or the Tribune or whomever your source is. <clears throat> And, and like I said, be careful with these dates because a lot of stuff has changed and it's not in the news. So they say most of or, you know, stuff like that. So what if we see an article that discusses um, a downfall with um, the Bahamas' risk rating or CDD, and we make reference to that, that'll work too. That'll it's work not really fine. a case, but it's just a reference to where um, the FATF came to us saying something. Yeah, that's fine. Once you okay. can say, according okay. to the Nassau Guardian on June 22nd, you know, 2003. Okay, okay, great. Blah, great. blah, blah. Great. Yeah. Okay. But then in some cases, you need, if there's a real life case, you need need to put in your real life case. A lot of times people create scenarios. Okay. Say, especially when it's like for placement, say somebody walks into the bank and they win a number from this underworld that we need to talk about and they try and put the money into the system. No, there are actually cases out there where people were charged for placement. But Ms. Bullard, like that's still a valid example. It's that's so valid. incomprehension. It's valid, but they, they, you get full points if you put a real life case because it, it, it shows that you you can tie the theory to the practical and a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people book smart, but in the office, they, they have all these accolades on the wall. Amen. And they, they don't know how to turn on the computer. So tell me what has happened in real life. And then I believe you understand or comprehend. So quotes to get full points. Yeah. Not my actual case understand. examples to get case examples to get full points. You can get some points, but if you want full points, you put in those case examples. Y'all is just worry too much. Y'all made it this far. And, and for, for the rest, some of you are going to continue on the journey and you're going to go all the way to ICA. Please pray, Dang. pray away to worry because y'all can do it. The mere fact that y'all are here, you know, it's, it's not going to be smooth sailing. We need to get 100%, but we we leaving what more than what we came in here with. Couldn't we agree to that? We learned something in these 10 weeks. Yes? Yes. Okay. Most definitely. Okay, and, and, and that's what mom. Yeah, and so now we can put that in writing. And if first we don't succeed, we try again. It's very complex. This this is a high level class. This is in uh, English or, or, or math. This this requires um, reading, research, and then decision making. Okay, it's it's a complex area the in financial um, services sector. Okay, so please go easy on yourself. And y'all go easy on yeah. us when marking. Yeah. Listen, I, no, if anybody ever um, take 
my exams. They know. Yeah, no surprises. <laughs> Talk about this. Shabana, you had surprises? Miss Bullard, that intro was a very much a surprise. Oh, she's sorry. Sorry, I just realized my mic. I'm sorry. No laughing. And, and people got 100%? Got 100. And I thought it was too easy. Seven essay questions and three hours. Who got 100? Three Y'all find my paper? You say we find your paper, Shauna? Not oh, me. Oh, oh, okay. This, you didn't never find a famous bullet. Rhea, no. <laughs> no. I ain't gonna die. But Very interesting. You, 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 Rhea, you don't even have a complaint. I don't even know what you're talking about. You don't right? have a complaint, you but you... You write it off. So it don't like, I'm even worrying about that. Because yeah, you say you can't find it. But now nah, you're telling me people get 100%. And I, I don't I work in the that. office. See, I don't work in the office. And I was only allowed access to certain stuff. You know, I said, please let me look to the class. You know, now I know why Hasty's paper isn't there because she didn't take it with the class. I it, Did you take, you said you took it with the class, right? Mm-hmm. Right, and so they started to say, well, how many, how many papers do you want to look through? You know, so I, I got like four of them, like every, the, who took the paper around that time, the classes, and, and it wasn't in any of those. But this bullet, that's just so, I, so I ready to scan your paper to my email, this, this go around just to make sure that never happens again. So if you okay. have any questions, you could, you know, but it'll come up, it's just, you know, need some time. Make it show up because it, it's not lost. It, it's going to show up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So you could you could get an A plus plus for you because <laughs> an A plus wasn't enough. So you could get but I get you. You keep so you saying that nice. Like <laughs> Sorry that you only got ninety nine for you. I will make sure you get one hundred. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, guys. Um, okay. I, Would you say real? No, 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 I say nothing. Oh, okay. Yeah, but guys, you all did a wonderful job. I'm very proud. I know that all of you who want to continue on the journey, uh, I will see you in ICA. And it's going to be tough, but again, it's achievable, okay? So like I say, please believe in yourself a little bit. You made it this far. Um, and some people couldn't even hold on to the 10 weeks. So the mere fact that you held on to the 10 weeks and we are at this point, you won't come this far to just give up, okay? You made it, okay? If you have to take the test once or twice, that's, that's fine. You, you made it, okay? So pat yourself on the back and plan your celebration, okay? Because once you study, you have all the material, you have to do a little bit of research, but you can definitely achieve this. And if you don't go on to ICA, um, y'all are all in my network. Please stay current, go to those seminars, dress up, and network, 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 okay? Uh, and you'll be successful um, in, in, in this corporate Bahamas, okay? So it was a pleasure. I wish you all the best of luck next week. And please, like I say, if there's an emergency or some change that has to be made, please contact Ms. Dean. Okay, thank you, Ms. Wood. Uh, one more thank question. Thank you. If we don't um pass this exam, we could take the exam over without taking a class over, right? Yes. Okay. Is it a separate fee? Yeah, it's two hundred dollars to do a week. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And so, if you don't show up next week without an excuse from Miss Dean, you're automatically going to be assessed the two hundred dollar fee. So please don't call Miss Dean afterwards, unless it was a true emergency and you have a doctor's letter, because you will be charged that fee. Okay, so please communication is, is key. Okay, thank you. Okay, any any other questions or concerns? No questions. Was that what what the, the exercise that we did? Sorry, sorry, wait, hold on one second, notes. <laughs> I know. I say no question, plenty concerns though. <laughs> okay.
Okay, who is this? Because I don't know a Nicholas knows. Oh, I, I should have changed the name. Sorry, this is Gary. Oh, okay, Gary. Because I was wondering. When I see this Nicholas Knowles, I say, what's going on here? I don't know a Nicholas Knowles after 10 weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, was, sorry, Demetria, was, go ahead. I was wondering if the, the, the exercise that we did tonight, would we get points for that? So what's the, it's to go into the exam with? No, Demetria, everybody, if you did your homework, you did okay. your civic organization and you did your newspaper, most, most persons going in, when we check the register, at least 70% of you are going in with 30 points already. So you're already halfway there. Okay then, all right. Okay, so you don't need no more. Any more points, that's half of the, the, the class. They okay. done rallying me and saying scale back on 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 these points that I give you all. So yeah, you all are halfway do there. Tell them don't do that because yeah, most yeah. of y'all are halfway there. So you do your best and, and you'll be successful. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Miss Bullard. All right, thank you guys. You take care. Have a productive week, get some rest, and like I say, unwind, do whatever makes you feel good, and then study. Yes, I can drink some alcohol tonight and then study yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, very good. Very Bye, Miss Bullard. Thank All you. Right, guys. Take care. All right, thank you. All right, have a good evening. You, you too. too. Bye bye.